Hello Monsters, this is Little Monster Girl Desi, coming at ya. And I hope you're all safe during quarantine. I know a lot of you are probably really bored, so... I thought I'd give you a little bit of entertainment by talking about a topic that's been on my mind for a while. Plus, it's been quite a while since I've done a recorded video like this, and because the topic will be relevant pretty soon, thought it'd be as good as time as any. So, let's get started. Alright, to start off, I want to ask a question. What's a background character? And this is probably a pretty simple question to answer, especially since they're in pretty much every cartoon that isn't just solely based on a family. In general, background characters help a world feel more alive and not so solitary with only four to five characters. Obviously, not every background character can have spotlight, but if you've been in the Ed's World fandom or MLP, you'll definitely know that background characters are a pretty big topic sometimes, depending on who you ask. Now, obviously, main characters get the spotlight most of the time, especially for artists. But in other cases, it's the background characters that get the spotlight. And personally, I'm going to talk about them just to give a bit of perspective, as well as my own view on them. I personally really like background characters and find them a lot of fun, at least when they're not just having a whole walk cycle. As somebody who grew up with watching a lot of anime, background characters haven't really been all that important to them. In most cases, you can tell the protagonist and antagonist by their hair colors, while all background characters will have natural colored hair and either be faded out or, like, colored in gray. It still makes the world feel alive and brings out the main characters more. But after being in the My Little Pony fandom, it's definitely lost some of its... I don't want to say appeal since there wasn't any appeal to it, but... I guess I could say it's a bit of a pet peeve now. But anyways, I wasn't really in the MLP fandom for very long. I was more of a casual fan than somebody who made a bunch of fan art and fan fiction for it. But I still really love the series, and every once in a while while scrolling through fan art and stuff, I would see a drawing of a pony that I didn't recognize. But then when re-watching an episode, I would always be able to Oh my goodness, pointed out. I don't know why I said it like that. But that's probably what sparked my interest in it. Like I said, I was more of a casual fan, so I didn't really get to explore this. But it definitely triggered something in me. And years later, while I was just casually scrolling through YouTube, I saw a little music video, I guess you could call it, of something called My Little Pony Next Generation. You can probably see where this is going if you follow me on either Amino, Tumblr, or Instagram. But that led to a little speed paint using Microsoft Paint, and that kind of exploded into a few other things when searching through DeviantArt for the artist of said characters. I didn't really dive that deep, it was more of a, like a little surprise interest, but still an interest nonetheless. Because one thing that I found out while scrolling through it is that instead of just making OCs for the uh, <laughs> for the second counterpart of the family, hence either the mother or father, the artists used background characters, or characters that were touched upon a few times but were easily forgotten. Of course, I, I didn't really think of this concept uh, for a while until I was in the Ed's World fandom. Now, a while ago, I talked about how the current next-gen characters that I have, Toby, Theo, Max, and Ethan, were not my first choices for the whole Ed's World next-gen. On the contrary, the reason I came up with the idea, which was obviously sparked by the My Little Pony thing, but I only just recently realized that, was actually the three little kids at the very end of the second part of the end. I said the end a lot. 
However, when I was putting together the whole thing for Ed's World Next Gen, Edtober kind of rolled around and obviously the beta designs for the characters ended up going up and Amino kind of blew up on those, so I ended up switching gears. But I didn't completely forget the idea of wanting to use background characters. Now the idea of background characters in general was actually sparked by another artist on Amino. Said artist started drawing background characters of a few characters from Ed's World, since obviously it was on the Ed's World Amino. <laughs> but anyways, one character that she drew that I definitely recognized from one of the episodes was a character that me and a friend renamed Adelaide. Though I think the artist uh, who drew her first was, I think her name was Kate, not the artist, the character. And the character I'm talking about is the pink haired one from Spares. And I guess you could say this more along the lines of re-sparked an interest. When I was thinking of Ed's World Next Generation, I definitely noticed that a lot of the fan kids were mostly for pairings of guy on guy, which is probably due to the fact that there aren't a lot of girls in Ed's World. Well, minus the background characters, but as I said, they're not really touched upon. Other than a few really popular ones, but I'll get to that. So I didn't really want to limit myself since the whole fan kid thing was not really overdone, but it was done so many times that I wanted to do something different. And I guess in the back of my mind, I remembered the whole My Little Pony Next Generation thing. So I decided to start scrolling through episodes looking for background characters, which sparked the creations of my four FCs, Susan, Anya, uh, Amanda, and Roxy. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, had to burp. Which obviously not a lot of people know because nobody on YouTube seems to read descriptions and then get mad at me for not doing their ships when I do a music video or meme video. Honestly, if you want a certain ship, just do it yourself. Don't complain to me. But I'll save that salt for a different video. Either way, all four of these characters were ones that I pulled from the background. Though one of them is more of a humanized version of, well, a bass guitar. And I started just kind of running with the whole background characters x main characters thing. Now while in the Ed's World fandom it's not as much touched upon as the MLP fandom considering the limited cast, there are f there are quite a few popular background characters like Holocard, Coco, and Laurel. And there have been other people who have touched upon background characters and tried to give them a personality. Said creators have either currently left the fandom or aren't as well known. And others like the, the beginning of the Frank crew, who have used background characters in their comics, I'm guessing that those background characters just kind of get absorbed with the OC background characters. I... I insist that there is a difference between the two. I swear. But either way, in My Little Pony, background characters are definitely a really big part of the fandom. At least for part of it. Characters like Derpy Hooves, Dr. Hooves, Cherry Berry, Bon Bon and Laurel are definitely some of the bigger names. And Gold Star if any of you know those guys. Well yeah, it is really fun to mess around with main characters of series. I've definitely discovered that digging into the backgrounds is a lot of fun too. Because while making OCs and stuff like that are definitely a lot of fun as well, the thing about background characters is that they're already a part of the world. They already exist within canon. All you really gotta do is give them a personality and turn them into an FC. Or otherwise known as a fan canon. And with that, when digging through backgrounds or different scenes, you can try and put together the character's personality like you would an OC. 
like say my character mm, Amanda. One of the first times that I remember seeing Amanda, or at least a character drawn similar to her, is during one of the zombie episodes. In it, she doesn't really get a speaking role, more of a screaming role, before getting eaten by a zombie. Now, before any of you jump on that whole getting eaten by a zombie comment, let me remind you, not a lot of people actually remain dead in Ed's world. The second time that I can recall seeing her is in Santa Claus 1. In that scene where the two girls walk in on Santa Claus and one of them gets eaten. In that scene, Amanda is kind of, well, she's obviously shocked that her friend just got eaten right in front of her. And the fact that it's Christmas, she, both her and her friend thought that it was the actual Santa Claus and then was given a teddy bear kind of indicates that she's young, at least to me. And that she is also wearing a I love, I heart Matt button which definitely indicates that she knows who Matt is. This is actually the reason why I made her and Matt a couple for my Ed's World Next Generation. While there's not a ton to go on, it definitely leaves a lot open to speculation and just pretty much bullshitting it. But that was actually a lot of fun too. Now, while I can't proclaim that the way her personality currently is, is what Edward Gold actually intended for a literal background character that he threw in and killed off at least once. I can say that she has definitely become one of my favorite characters so far. And before I created my character Anya, she was definitely one of the biggest reasons why I really loved using background characters rather than OCs. And it also inspired me to explore more of the MLP fandom, too. I wasn't really big on MLP, definitely in high school. And I kind of regret that now that the series is currently over. But looking back at some of the artists who have also used either solely background characters or have added a lot of background characters to their storytelling, it definitely makes the world feel more alive when you explore not only the main cast, but the supporting cast and the background characters who make the world feel more alive. And I can honestly say that if I either stuck to MLP in high school or found out about the Ed's World fandom during that time, I definitely would have had a lot more fun in those fandoms than the creepypasta fandom I got sucked into while in high school. Sorry for rambling a lot about this topic, but I hope it was at least a little bit entertaining for you guys. And I hope it inspires a lot of the other artists to not just look at the main cast or secondary cast, but to dig through the background to find interesting characters too. I've definitely noticed that nowadays, background characters are definitely getting a lot more attention, at least in design and at least having a bit more to do with the story that's going on rather than just being there. But that's all I got to say today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Ooh, it has been quite a while since I last recorded anything for you guys, huh? And boy, does my throat freaking hurt. But either way, I hope you guys at least enjoyed the video. I've been keeping myself kind of busy with other projects, commissions, and a bit more life stuff that has nothing to do with the state of the world right now. But either way, I'm still holding strong and I'm still doing my best to put out content. And if you guys liked this video, please leave a like or a comment down below. You can also share this video or subscribe if you haven't already. The little monster community is always looking for new members. And if you want to help support me, then you can go on to my Patreon. There are different rewards posted, and every little bit helps. But if you can't, that's okay. Honestly, I like making content just to make other people happy. So, with all that said, please be safe during this time, and watch out for the monsters under the bed, and I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video.
Bye.